Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit hello, back, hello. relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus, and everyone at home hello. watching us live, listening to us after the fact. It's been a busy week. A lot of things have been going on, up mm -hmm. to including the pure genius of my engineering. Ah, yes. <laughs> Behold. The, the jank. The, the, yeah. pinnacle, the pinnacle of engineering excellence, Pedro. Uh, we need Steve Husband to make you a case for that. What are we looking at? You see, ironically, Pedro and I were talking about that earlier. With um, It's like, oh, yeah, it's like, well, to put a point on it, we're talking about I made a Raspberry Pi camera because I'm sure everyone how easy they are to set up. And what I've done is just to fix the back of the case to the camera with a thing I like to call gaffer's tape or painter's tape. And we were talking, um, Pedro and I, I was like, yeah, you know, I could print out a clip and hold it, get it lined up, figure out what material I need and what the tensile string needed to be, put it all together. And, you know, like I could be also, I could be using that camera with little pieces of tape for like 16 hours before you got that figured out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so there's also that um be on the lookout for it i'll have that post up uh probably by friday i'll have everything together the whole point of this is um i had four cameras hooked up to this box yesterday it was i couldn't walk in here it was danger and um doing a comparison how to get the camera pie all that fun with a high quality camera too, multiple lenses and all that fun stuff Probably by Friday, I'll have that together and out for patrons. So uh, look forward to that or in anticipation. I didn't fall or break anything, so I'll take that as a bonus. Well, some, I know someone's disappointed mm. already. Oh, I know. <laughs> Speaking of disappointment, what's going on, Pedro? Uh, well, uh, not so much disappointment, but I did successfully manage to now figure out how to do uh, the soldering with that uh, teeny tiny little... 8 watt USB soldering. My boy, guy. my baby discovered Flux. <laughs> yeah, no, as it turns out, Flux is amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it also smells amazing. I really like the smell of hot flux. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> and apparently, it's really bad for you. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I decided, you know what, let's find one of the slightly more complicated uh, soldering kits uh, for intermediate users. And I ordered one of these, which is. Um, like a breadboard <laughs> yes it, it is a breadboard but it, uh, it's the um the, how do you what do you call the uh, sand clocks i'm missing a word the sand clocks sand clocks the ones that have sand hourglass. that you flip them hourglass thank you hourglass oh <laughs> yeah it's basically got the hourglass design with the, the those oh, would be yeah. um see that <laughs> little leds okay uh, and yeah, it's got a lot of them to uh, solder in and a bunch of switches and buttons and a little microprocessor, uh, which actually came with a socket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you tell me what's wrong with that socket? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's not missing the light. No, sir. Yeah. So I looked everywhere in the bag and the leg was nowhere to be found. So oh, I guess I'm no. uh, putting the microprocessor directly on the PCB. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like you're going to flick. So is that going to have like some type of potentiometer or something to tell that it's been flipped? And... No. No? It, it just counts. Uh, I think it's 30 minutes one <sighs> way and then the LED start filling the other way after another 30 minutes. <laughs> well... That's a bit disappointing. I knew you would get there eventually. Um, but <laughs> I will say I'm, I'm glad you discovered Flux. Flux enables spray and play, uh, pray. Uh, it uh, makes yeah. everything so much easier. <laughs> if you under, if you watch Lewis on his channel, I'm like, you know, technically you can't really bodge that up, man. Uh, if I was doing like ball grid BGA stuff, I. Drowning stuff too, but uh, <laughs> drown it in flux and then wipe it off later with some uh, isopropyl alcohol. Because, there, done. Yeah, every time I use my hot air flow station, it's just like it's usually an ice it just goes <laughs> flies off. Like, okay, let me see if I can get that back on. What's new with you, Jill? Oh well, I am. Um, uh, my parts for my new mini ITX build are starting to arrive, and here's my twenty seven hundred X. 
So that's going to be my mid-range one. And then I'm going to build, like I said last week, an, an, a high-end rig for my broadcasting rig um, after all the big announcements. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. And I'm going to be building a new computer for Steve Husband. <laughs> so he's excited too. <laughs> <laughs> Did you finally find one of those Hot Wheels PCs? Yeah, <laughs> I, I those actually are have. Yeah, they yeah are. I actually have the Barbie one. I do have the Barbie PC <laughs> in my collection. <laughs> finally, you need to gut it and make a modern, uh, like sleeper cape, put something there for That's Steve. That's exactly yeah. what I have been wanting to do, but I'm yeah, not it's... paying what they want for those cases. <laughs> Come on, they're God, brilliant. I remember... They'll just stay nice and warm. The Hot Wheels cases and the Barbie cases, they couldn't get rid of those. I mean, they used to be like like 30 bucks for a while around town. That's because they were engineering junk. That the, yep. like all the PCs they were died inside badly of made. them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good they were times. Badly made. Good That's why times. Mattel got out of that. <laughs> the uh Oh, hey, let's get some Linuxy stuff because uh Susie needs some help. Yeah. So this is uh Really wonderful. Uh, would you like to contribute to a wonderful and friendly Linux distro? I don't know. What if I got a problem with the color green? <laughs> oh, I love the color green. <laughs> Wrong distro. And oh. no Linux Mint yeah. or Ubuntu Mate for you either. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have geekos, in fact, in this room. Uh, stuffed geekos. So OpenSUSE is looking for volunteers. And they need volunteers for editing and writing for documentation and wikis. And also for creating video tutorials, including producing, scripting, editing, and uh, you know they need someone out there who who has the knowledge to do that and is would be, you know, happy to contribute to the distro. And they also need volunteers for testing the software workflow and settings on new hardware, and to make sure that their software works well on it and that it it has a nice nice flow for what they want for their distro so it's all good i'm definitely down with that man um i'm all for um <laughs> you know if you use susie and and you want to lay down some knowledge and help some people out give them a ring they got telegram discord irc of course get in touch with them because you know people mm -hmm. people who can make linux educational material for other linux users kind of rare Always in short supply, so it'd be good if you get out there and give them a hand. Also, Pedro, they need translators. Ah, yes, yes, they do. <laughs> because as it turns out, if you keep adding new stuff, especially uh, in the case of OpenSUSE with their tumbleweed distribution, there's a lot of new stuff. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if you have translators and um, if you have... A contribution to make. Uh, Ltenant.opensusie.org is the website that you should go to. I contributed a lot to uh, Ubuntu Mate uh, or the Mate uh, desktop environment <laughs> translations, but then there was an update and a bunch of, uh, of things got added. And I looked and it's like, <sighs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Which is a perfectly we fair response. <laughs> Technical documentation is also very important. Yeah. And you can also contribute to their um, get.opensource.org website. They need help with that as well. And possibly even to make some, help them make some music videos <laughs> that they're known for. <laughs> See, I, I advise if, just don't do it. Don't do that. That. <laughs> No, the, the world has been provided with enough cringe on that aspect. Aww. Everything else, I'm 100% behind. <laughs> they've, done, they've done some good music videos, so that's uh, to promote. Open debatable. Yeah, yeah, very debatable. debatable. Hey, <laughs> I'm being positive. Uh, hi, how's it? Oh, I could be positive too, but I, I'm like, oh, no. That, that, that's... Yeah, no, the worst thing you can do to someone is damn them with fine praise. Well, that, uh, yeah. that is kind of thing. You know, you don't necessarily want to run out on the front lawn and be like, the sun square because everyone's like, no. um, okay fine whatever. tell an artist that something is good but it actually is they're, they're gonna run right up to you and they're gonna shake you and you're like good lord man are you running plasma 
<laughs> <laughs> I am, actually, <laughs> as it turns out. Yes. And uh, there's a new version. Uh, it came out uh, last week, but it was a little bit, you know, right then and there. So uh, we decided to wait for this week. Uh, Plasma 520. It's new. Approved inside and out. So uh, some of the uh, issues or some of the uh, up and coming uh, interesting bits like the Vulcan renderer and everything else, those will be for Plasma 521 or maybe later. Uh, this one is basically uh, the ones we were talking about a couple of months ago that have basically attempted to reunify the entire uh, system settings window because they started to replace some of the settings uh, widgets with the new QML based ones and the... Oh, that's what was making that noise. Okay. <laughs> that was only mildly distracting. Uh, the, I can the, cut it back uh, on if, you, if it would please No, you. no, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the, like the older uh, versions that were still in there, uh, they clashed a little bit, so they decided to unify all of that. Um, and honestly, well, I did have a memory leak uh a few memory leaks uh, over the past couple of weeks, but that turned out to be the problem with Quantum or Quantum. Mm. That's a uh, rendering engine for Plasma, uh, similar to the Breeze and the Fusion, and I don't think they use QT Curve anymore. This looks like but, a video well. for people who know what kerning is. <laughs> it is... It it is a GUI, and uh, they are trying their uh, best to make sure that the GUI experience is as unified and uh, feels as natural and as integrated as possible. And kudos to KDE, they've actually succeeded in a lot of that. Now they just need to work on fixing bugs. <sighs> Because they, they're still there, uh, Mir pointed out, uh, the, the translation bug that keeps cropping up, that, that's been around since forever. Uh, you change the system language to, say, Portuguese, and then half of the system will be in English, while the folders mm. that XDG mm. can see, it's like, oh, your documents, everything else, that gets translated to Portuguese. So... <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that's been an issue for a long time, and they fixed it several times, and then they break it again. Hmm. So, it's t teeny tiny little things. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love the new wallpaper. Actually, the wallpapers from the last few releases, the I like the beach one. That, that one was really beautiful. nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, yeah, that actually was my favorite so 518, far. 518, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um... I've the KDE, KDE has always been one one of the best uh, desktop managers um, regarding notifications. They've always done a really good job of that, and was was way ahead of a lot of the other uh, uh, window managers uh, because of that. And in this release, um, you actually get notified when you run low on disk space, which is <laughs> very good, especially if you're you're working, say, in LibreOffice, and um, you know you have a a, a a crash <laughs> if if you ran out of disk space and you're trying to save a file it actually did happen to me once um but but now it'll notify you so that won't you won't be in danger of uh low disk space and what's also cool is you can now enter the do not disturb mode by simply clicking on the notifications applet or system tray icon makes that much more convenient now and uh, some of the other desktop managers have started doing that as well. So it's really good. All right. That's the thing. It's mm -hmm. KDE. If it's your taste, go for it. And <laughs> yeah, that's on you, though. And enjoy your translation. Uh, what, what about uh, what, what was the last <laughs> little bit about Waylon? Is it just 10 years away? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at, the, at the bottom of the page. In the right? works. <laughs> or did you just tap out there? You're like, no. Uh, I, no, I was looking at uh, Discord because yeah. uh, Nemo is wrong. <laughs> and uh, to your point, Nemo, uh, go ahead and go to i10n.opensusie.org. See what websites you get. Okay. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Waylon support? Th th this is why you can't be within 12 hours of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Waylon support in KDE. There, there was a mention at the end of the article. There is, and uh, there was a lot of work put into um, 
getting Wayland to work in KDE. You may even remember that there were uh, NVIDIA patches submitted by NVIDIA themselves to make sure that the EGL streams bit actually worked. And uh, right now, uh, you can if, use KDE uh, with Wayland, but there are still a number of issues and a number of known issues. There's a full change log. They have the link at the end there. And um, mouse and touchpad support aren't exactly on par mm. with the, with the, how they work and the acceleration and everything else. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's progress. I guess. I mean, it's not like Wayland is going anywhere. So Wayland's well, pretty. I saw a, <laughs> a mention earlier today that um, Electron is going to get Wayland powers. Nah, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exciting times, kids. Yeah. <laughs> so why are we talking about a weather applet? Oh well, this is it's because this is my favorite one, and, and I use this I know. all. Hey, let me let me show you exactly why we're talking about this because it's got a bunny rabbit in it. That's the only reason we're talking yeah. about this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not hearing it's denial. Is all I'm not hearing. <laughs> so this is WTT dot in, or, or I say I I call it weather dot in, and uh, I've you know mentioned this before on LWW, but I wanted to go into a bit more detail because it's something I use all the time and it's just a, a really cool um, feature and app and is you that can like supposed run to be one bunny rabbit or is that like two bunny rabbits like on top of each other <laughs> trying a, to get into it's a, a sun. I, it's, yeah it's the big uh, carcinogenic star in the yeah, sky <laughs> that, that's bunny yeah. rabbit <laughs> so you can run weather dot in in the shell by simply typing curl weather dot in or in a web browser at weather.in. No, we're talking weather.ham. <laughs> and uh, you can embed it as a widget on your desktop or website or save it as a PNG. And uh, just really nice, uh, tons of functionality. You know, you can write scripts for it, like I said, to put it on your, your desktop or as a widget. And it's just got, it's has beautiful ASCII weather art as well as Ven was showing <laughs> ones that look like the sun looks like a bunny and one of my other favorite things is you can configure it like what um, no good weather app <laughs> doesn't allow you to configure it so this one you can actually add the humidity for for uh, the day or the week um, the temperature even the moon phases precipitation so it's it just has a whole lot of detailed settings that you can use and i love the layout it's just an easy to read grid with you know the morning uh, middle of the day and uh, night uh, temperatures and it's just easy and convenient and i love it <laughs> i use it all the time i even yeah. use it on mobile <laughs> and being able to just curl wttr.in yeah. and it goes oh you're here are you there's your weather. Yeah, that's nice. You don't so easy. need anything else installed other than curl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that can be pretty handy, man. Um, all I can say to that is, OK, Google, tell me about um, Bluetooth <laughs> security. It seems like every year we're graced with a brand new <laughs> security exploit for Bluetooth. Yep, and it is Bluetooth mm -hmm. uh, when you have something so ubiquitous, quiet like the blue teeth. Yeah, it's it's bound to be uh, exploited about as hard as it can. This one seems to affect Blue Z directly. Uh, if you have the blues or Blue Z or how I think I've gone through all of the variations uh, at this point, so uh, I've probably angered everyone. <laughs> but uh, Andy uh, Nguyen uh, managed to. Um, create a proof of concept and there's a blog post with it uh, with basically being able to within Bluetooth range, which as we know, a Pringles can point it at a laptop increases the Bluetooth range significantly. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, yeah, you could uh, effectively send uh, arbitrary code and run commands remotely without any kind of user interaction. As long as the uh, blues um, daemon is running and Bluetooth is uh, visible, 
you're vulnerable, basically. Now, this isn't as big an issue in the age of the pandemic, uh, because no one, or uh, far less people are going out to coffee shops and whatnot, so far less likely that you'll be vulnerable to this. But do keep your uh, laptop and your phone, if the if Bluetooth is on, keep them invisible. Don't make them visible at all. I know that's a stupid default, and I know for a fact that KDE, for one, keeps um, crying at you uh, if your uh, computer is not visible via Bluetooth. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, if you have Bluetooth enabled on your PC, that's your own problem. <laughs> well, there's... Um, Things that require Bluetooth. <laughs> yep, that looks like a problem with a bunch of buttons on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the nicest problem. Well, it's all yours. Um, well, and some people use Bluetooth keyboard and mice, too. So see, that's, that's 104 thing. problems in one convenient yeah. little package. <laughs> <laughs> or 130, if you have one of the big ones. <laughs> Mine uses Wi-Fi, so ha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Wi-Fi direct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, as uh, Pedro just, you know, mentioned, it really, you know, if you're at home, this is not going to affect you really that much unless your family wants to hack your system and, and it has the know-how to do it. It's actually uh, quite challenging to do. So that definitely is a thing. And um, if you're out and about, say, at Starbucks, uh, not no, not many people have the know-how to hack Blue Z, let alone a hack on Linux. So... <laughs> It's it's a thing, but you still have to be very careful because it is a very serious, actually, vulnerability for sure. <laughs> just take yeah. care, make sure, like, especially <laughs> if you're using a dongle, like, just put an extra layer of aluminum, aluminum foil. Around yeah, it, there you go. The PC. <laughs> yeah, you can just make a channel uh, of aluminum foil directly to your device, which then kind of defeats the purpose of the whole. You know, it'd probably be a lot thing. safer <laughs> if we could, like, um, like, put a wire on the Bluetooth. You know, from device to device. That would help. Yeah. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, it defeats With the purpose the a little bit. Yes. <laughs> With the can at either end. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just tuned in right now and they're like, really? And I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jammy is something we brought up, but they have a, well, a couple of yeah. updates. Yeah, so Jammy um, is a peer-to-peer -peer soft phone that we've talked about before, and it's also an instant messenger that has positioned itself as the free and open source alternative to Skype, which is a good thing. And it's actually been around a long time. You may have used it. It was formerly GNU Ring, and then before that, SFL Phone. And they have a new update. It's called Jammy in quotes together and their focus is not just on peer-to-peer -peer, but on large group collaboration as well so they've done a lot of improvements in that area and they've also uh, and it's also been updated to work better on low bad bandwidth networks which is really good for people that for instance are still on old an older version of dsl or classic dial-up and it's great because they got it down to 50 kilobytes in audio video mode and 10 kilobytes for audio only calls. And that's that's actually really significant. So they've done some amazing updates. There's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> you can go through and, and read that article. Very well done. I've definitely played around with Jamie a couple of times. Um, tried to take a Pepsi challenge even with this show because um, it can work with lower bandwidth. Also, it has the advantage of being able to take uh, make use of HEVC, H.265, which, man, mm. come on, it's 2020. More more things should take advantage of that um, bandwidth requirement-wise because 265 is a straight-up dark art because I'll, if I record something in 265, it's a bear to work with, but file size, mm. like being able to utilize that for streaming. The problem, problem is the underlying tech's always been great. I've liked it. Forward thinking. That client, man, that client would break in fascinating, entertaining ways differently on different mm -hmm. machines. Yeah. I remember the, uh, uh, it was uh, Ven, myself, and Jordan trying 
to you uh, set up Ring at the time to uh, <laughs> find an alternative because Skype for Linux was dying mm -hmm. and we needed something. <laughs> so uh, it was interesting. It's like the you had a bit of a launch procedure to get everything to work properly. And yeah, it would just give up halfway through, which was weird. <laughs> I'm always open to go back and play with it. I will say um, if this reaches anyone working on the clients, expose a couple of things that are very important for doing what we do. And they're just nice options to have is echo cancellation. I want to be able to kill that. Any type of audio processing that you're doing, make that an option so we can kill it. And um, it's pretty much it man uh, it's basically the audio stuff and we, we can play with it see what the latency is like and um more options more better but hey. yes <laughs> i like crazy stuff this is some crazy stuff so sit back and allow me to inject you with it this is uh, <laughs> a vst server what's vst it's an audio plugin for you dog yeah i know audio stuff go make some popcorn get something to drink i'm gonna talk about it um this is audio gritter it's a plug-in host now it's kind of different because you're thinking well you know i can use carla or something like that and with like uh i can run wine to host my windows vst twos and threes under linux this is this is basically going to allow you to turn windows into a butter robot and it's just going to live on your network only to host vst threes that you can query and pull in with the audio gritter and drop that plugin itself into your DAW over your network and then you can access all of those plugins. It's like, that's really neat. I don't have Windows and I don't have a bunch of um, Windows or Mac VST or any plugins whatsoever for those platforms because I'm me, but it's really like that can solve a lot of problems right there. And hey man, I like, I like the idea and you can do this with OS X, but the joke doesn't stand so much. But um, being able to use Windows as a server, isn't that like a novel thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Microsoft did attempt at one point to have this whole uh, server infrastructure built on Windows Server. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's called Azure, and it runs on Linux. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, well, it's really an issue because you know most of the plugins on linux are lv2 and people are like that's ah, dark arts moon magic mainly because documentation for writing lv2 i know this personal experience is words i can't say on this show for family friendly but they would be very apt description uh for the documentation for lv2 vst2s have been around vst3 support isn't even in ardor our door Currently, it's only available in nightlies, and so they're still working through that. But this is like, boom, you drop that into a channel strip if you're using Reaper, Bitfig, or anything like that. And you can access all the stuff that you currently have. That can be a game changer for some people. Thinking about like, hey, man, don't give this Linux thing a try because it makes sense for a DOS. Especially if you're on a Mac right now. You're looking for plan B. Let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest maybe, maybe windows doesn't sit with you for a bunch of reasons well hey man maybe come on over but let's keep the audio train going because when i talk about audio stuff both of these they just check out so i gotta carry everything by myself <laughs> um, this is interfacing linux man this is a series i do just mainly because no one else is going to do it where I'm just taking the Pepsi challenge with a bunch of old um, audio interfaces, Firewire, because you know what? AD conversion, preamps, those, those have been sorted for about the past 15 years. And you can buy some very high quality equipment for pennies on the dollar because Windows and Mac, they've bailed on Firewire. And we have Firewire support for audio interfaces directly in the kernel that shims. Now, I don't necessarily use it at this point. It's still immature. But it is available through Fado as well. So I take these devices, I plug them in, find out what they can do. Speaking of documentation, horrible documentation on what works and what doesn't with Linux. And this was for the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40. I went through that. I like Focusrite. Focusrite is like Behringer. They make cheap but usable gear. And um, 
focus rights way better at marketing because i was like oh i wouldn't buy behringer i <laughs> I, I bought this focus right and i'm like you realize that that is the exact same thing with a different paint shop right no, no it's not you don't know what you're talking <laughs> yeah. about more therefore um, it's worth more it, it, exactly i overpaid by 15 percent. it's clearly better than stone you don't know <laughs> so i test these things man um, see if they work out of the box what works what we can fix and can it be usable i really wish i could tell you that i even do I'm like look science testing i'm doing round trip latency man um <laughs> This, this, I kind of walked into, you know, there's my verdict. There's what you should do. There's the reviews like mechanism I put into our website because of, man, Pedro will love that. He'll get a lot of use on crickets. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, just to let you know what works, what nopes. And I wanted this because I know it's getting really hard to get a hold to uh pandemic and all that fun stuff. Uh, audio interfaces, like cheap ones, like, Hey, I just want like a little 204 or an I2I or two I2. And, it's like, well, maybe you can pick up something a lot better on the cheap. Not this one. This one's got a critical flaw in it. But if you want to find out what it is, you can head over to our web zone and find out. Look at that. That's evil what I just did, but I just did it, didn't I? Um, <laughs> consume more of our content, That's, that's correct. Yes. You'll never know. Or if you'll be like me when somebody pulls that on me when I'm listening to a podcast or watch the video, it's like, I guess the world will never know, man, because I'm not <laughs> Don't care enough to look it up. Go on. No, it's not even that. It's the contrary and part of my makeup, my design. I'm like, I want to know that, but I'm not going to go look because I'm going to teach you a oh, person who'll spite. never know. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, Secrets. We get to talk about uh, Microsoft. Yes. It's a big uh, Microsoft uh, hard Linux segment this week. It sure is. Ladies and gentlemen, Microsoft a couple of months back threatened to do something. It was an idle threat. And we said no. And I, I to my credit, I was like, well, I'll put some money on that. We'll see before Christmas. Like what? Two months ago, Redmond came out and they're like, it's, you're going to see it before October. I'm like, okay. <laughs> wow. It's it, October. <laughs> it, it, it is my responsibility, nay, duty, to report to you, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, zombie demon towards the internet. Edge on Linux is no longer an idle threat. That's right. It's thing. You can download it. I don't know why you'd want to, <laughs> but go ahead. Uh, we can finally harness, as Linux users, we can finally harness the power of Chromium under Linux. It's going to be a new experience for a lot of us. Um, Debs or RPMs, take your pick. That's great. It's pretty easy to get set up. Allegedly, Pedro's going to chime in on that. Now, which I didn't know what I was looking on. Um, the dev channel is live, which is like the nightly channel and the beta channel will be coming soon, which is like the monthly updates or something like that. And there's a giant square because I have, oh, it's a video. Hang on. Yes. <laughs> Introducing my, that, nah. I, I no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to be the better person. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, so who's down for a snowball fight in hell? <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, no, uh, we've seen Microsoft promising or threatening, as the case may be. See, now to... every time Pedro does that, I have to go like this extra step through the uh, YouTube thing. And I'm like, oh, great. Okay. Dum, dum, dum. It's like this extra like menu thing I have to go through. <laughs> Heck. <laughs> it's too late now. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I mean, you might as well but start it's... stripping. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, we're on Twitch right now. I can't. Uh, so, <laughs> no, it's. Uh, I did try it. I, I tried it. I downloaded the dab. Uh, I tried, uh, that's another thing that uh, KDE is, is currently broken in KDE, it's Discover. Uh, if you try to install a deb using Discover GUI, it doesn't. Uh, so I used EPKG like a sane person, and wouldn't you know it, it installed just fine, started it up. Yep, that looks a lot like Chrome with a Microsoft do-over. And I went to, of course, I had to go into help about and see the versions like, yep, Microsoft Edge version 80. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, that that's that. It works. It seems to work very well. I played some YouTube videos. Did, did I you went really through the like news walk thing. up to the house, kick the door, and be like, "All right, how did you guys manage to break Chromium?" <laughs> <laughs> the, 
I wanted to see if something was like really, really busted or if something just straight up didn't work on Linux, but no. No, I no. poked yeah. at the settings. I, I saw changed that you the were language. Playing with it, that you were downloading and installing it, and I never saw a screenshot in our Discord of our web zone. I was just, I, I, I <laughs> crawled into a corner. <laughs> myself See, I didn't everything. want to subject the server to that, but <laughs> that's Cloudflare, no, baby. You're not getting to the server. <laughs> Uh, what I tried was something that Chrome for Linux doesn't actually let you do, which is change the language, because Chrome on Linux is uh, objectively inferior to the Windows version, because the Windows version, you can pick whatever language you'd like to use. And for Linux, it picks automatically. Mm -hmm. But it's a bit stupid, because uh, say you have your uh, desktop in, say default or standard spanish or standard portuguese it defaults to their american counterparts so mm. chrome what? is dumb maybe, maybe, and in maybe that respect listen, it could be advanced it could default to country of origin <laughs> it could it doesn't <laughs> but uh yeah no it, it what it does right now is not very good either and that's something that i absolutely have to give microsoft props to you can pick the language is that so hard, Google? Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> well, I found it uh, weird. I, I downloaded the deb also on uh, Ubuntu, and I found it weird that <laughs> your sign in to your account is your Microsoft account instead of Google. And it's just strange to see that on a, on a Chromium based browser. <laughs> Use that old Hotmail account. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And it, it is a, it's nice when you launch it, it gives you three options for page layouts. Uh, one is focused, the other is inspirational and informational and, or you can customize it. I liked the inspirational uh, layout because it, it's kind of similar to the Bing search. That's one of the few things I like about the Bing search is they have really pretty background pictures. <laughs> and as a search engine, it actually works quite well. And it was also released uh, for Android in the Google Play Store as well. And I tested uh, the Google Play version and it, it was set up very nicely. Um, the hamburger menu was on the bottom of the screen and it was really easy to click on the hamburger and rearrange the menu with drag and drop because it's in a, a grid style, which was, was really a nice feature and it was easy to do. And so far, to me, it's, it seems really zippy. Um, it loaded up web pages really quick, and I went to linuxgamecast.com. It loaded it really quick, and I've been impressed by it. So very nice, I'd Microsoft. I'd just like to point out the <laughs> words spoken by one Jill Bryant not too long ago. Uh, okay. Bing is actually a pretty good um, search engine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I am more curious about this uh, Microsoft account. How does that? Do you need a Microsoft account to use it? You don't need a Microsoft account to mm -hmm. use it. Much like you don't need to log into Chrome to be able to use it. Now, here's uh, another question: um, If you want to sync, <laughs> yes, yeah, sync. Is there the equivalent of like Chrome Sync or Firefox yeah. Sync? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it uses Microsoft's uh, Now on to question three. How's the extension game work? Uh, you can enable Chrome cross-compatibility, so you can okay. just go to the Chrome store you and install it. You can just use your... <laughs> so, so it's like using Chrome with a bunch of extra steps thrown in and some functionality removed? Uh, arguably, there's more functionality. Oh, so you're, you're defending like Microsoft, understood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, arguably. <laughs> it's there, man. It's not as disturbing as this next bit of kit. Yeah, no, the <laughs> next bit is also uh, just as interesting. It's a snap! You can tell it's a snap because this comes from snapcraft.io. And uh, this is the Windows calculator uh, that was basically ported because the source code was released on GitHub not too long ago. And um, fine uh, enterprising people behind the Uno platform decided, you know what? We have this platform that uh, takes .NET and Mono, uh, basically C-sharp applications, whatever they happen to be built on, and makes them run on whatever operating system, be it on .NET in Windows or Mono for Mac OS and Linux. 
and well, they uh, grabbed the source code <laughs> from GitHub and made the Windows calculator work on Linux. It's only currently available as a snap. Boo. Uh, so I I will not be uh, putting this to the test, but it that's like the platform. The idea behind the platform seems sound. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Actually, back in the day, I used to use the Windows calculator all the time, especially in the Windows 3.1 and 95 days. Um, but now, really, I just use gcal uh, command in the terminal or the Google calculator in Google search. And but it is really, really cool that, um, you know, you don't you have another option other than electron wrapping all the things you can use Uno instead. And mm -hmm. uh, that language seems really good. I've been hearing a lot of good things about it, and the developers really like it because it's so easy to port from one platform to the next. Calculators used to be a thing. They used to be like mm -hmm. moderately critical. One of the things that you would make sure that you had access to, like calculator with a K. Yeah. <laughs> it's called K-Calc nowadays, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah K-Calc is another one. And then you could throw it in scientific mode, make people think you knew what you were doing, but you, nah, man, it's just like some basic stuff. <laughs> uh, I think like the most of humanity, the second uh, it was available or made aware to me that I was like, wait, I, I can just key this into the search bar. On Firefox or Google, done. Like yeah, yeah. Google. <laughs> it made it so much easier. <laughs> oh man! Um, if you like what we do and you want to help make what we do so much easier, look at that segue. Well, you can't beat it. We're talking about patreoncom <laughs> forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's where we hang out. That's how we pay the bills. But we like to give you a couple of sweet, sweet re rewards. Yes, prizes. Yes, prizes. That does that sound right, Pedro? Prizes. Um, I mean, it could Pedro, be punishments. Pedro Mateus, whatever you're into. Punishments. Yourself. Pedro is his own prize, man. Uh, we get a bunch of different levels uh, up to, and including advisors <laughs> helping make this show possible. That is really, I want to thank each and every one of you. Um, that's cool, man. We get to do this the way we want to do it. We're not uh, singing and dancing in any particular way to anyone else's song. And we get to do things like, Jordan's like, oh, I want to try to do this. Like, this is the entire management structure we're allowed to have. But Jordan's like, oh, do it. Well, oh, okay. You didn't have to tell me. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, stuff like who that. was it uh, that posted on Discord earlier in the week? Uh, something about uh, Jeremy Clarkson and uh, his brief stint as a video game journalist. And something, something about uh, it's like Top Gear, but for video games, about mm -hmm. the rash of TV programs here uh, in the UK. There's already a. Uh, sort of top gear but for linux news and uh for video games right here <laughs> yeah I, I don't like your analogies they're terrifying uh, uh, <laughs> i think it's probably that's, one of the worst uh, analogies yeah. hey i'd like world. to work with jeremy clarkson <laughs> uh, apparently him and um james may are uh, really awesome people i i hear mixed mm -hmm. things about having <laughs> yes same here so speaking of our Discord, man, uh, if you want access to our Discord, you can get that by becoming a patron. There's a couple of other things, man. Uh, access to the show notes. You get a custom RSS feed. If you like what we do here, like what we do Saturday, or if you just want to hear us uh, chat longer and you're listening to the regular show, check it out. There's like three and four hour versions along with video versions of the uncut episodes. Um, background music. I know that's important to me. That's why I make those available because I want people talking about something I'm halfway interested in, but not too much to where it's distracting. So I, I kind of keep that available for everyone. What else do we have? Oh, we have plenty of things to give out this week. Yes, I got we this sure wall do. behind me, man. This is fine. <laughs> upstanding cannibals. That's what it stands for. You weirdos. Quit thinking it means anything else. I don't understand what's wrong with people, but these are the list of people that you can't read because it's blacked out, blocked out by the glare. glare. I know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> If you picked up anything from the Wish Zone, we got a studio uh, list on Amazon, man. But like just stuff I'm planning on picking up for the studio. And last week, just casually, so you notice I'm not mentioning anything this week because last week, <laughs> last week it bit me because I was like, hey, Pedro, yeah, you, you play with the like little computer stuff, man. It's like, what do you think of this uh, cooler, man? Like, do you think, do you think that'll work with Jackbox? Because I was looking for, you know, a <laughs> water solution. I had a Hyper 212. 
on Jackbox, which is a Ryzen 1700 OG. And mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, maybe because after an hour or two, that 212 gets warm. It starts making a lot of noise. Bill, some time, Pedro. I need both hands. <laughs> uh, no, see, I was also going to reach into my uh, drawer here, take your mind out of the gutter, people, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, grab my uh, <laughs> Hyper 212. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that will save me from grabbing mine, because uh, we got to thank Arthur, and this showed up, uh, like, surprisingly. And I was like, okay, I got to try this out. <laughs> If you are curious, this is from Corsair. The the my running joke was, oh, this is a Corsair product in a Corsair case. That's so probably not going to work. Um, or it won't fit. Uh, but it does. This is a single like 120 little rad AIO, and it can keep a Ryzen 1700 at 60. Again, this is one with um, like it's just permanently clocked at three gigahertz. So there's yep. your there's your information <laughs> but thank you for that sir and it is most definitely i was able to uh unplug two of the 140 fans in that case nice. so it brought yeah. the rush down quite a <laughs> bit and i think i've mounted it in such a way so when it eventually leaks and tries to kill me um it will only just like get the bottom of the case one yeah. but to pedro's point pedro I pulled the 212 off. They do mount like the two. If you have a AM4 adapter kit for the 212, yes, they make those. Um, screw on both sides. Same idea because I initially opened the box and I saw like back plates and I was like, I'm this thing's never going to install. Um, <laughs> I, I love you. It's like, I, I, I don't feel like pulling the motherboard out of this box, man. But those were for the Intel solutions. And um, yeah, it just screws in. AMD has got a really nice backplate uh, out of the box on most of those uh, yeah. motherboards. That's nice. <laughs> I, I was very happy with it. So thank you again, Arthur, and um, keeping Aww. Jackbox nice and cool. And if anything ever happens to it, it's now your responsibility. It will be your fault. So you probably uh-huh. want <laughs> probably drip, want drip, to uh, drip, drip. <laughs> update your will because you might grossly underestimate the lifespans of ends. I mean, you, your great grandchildren's children just inherited this problem. Um, no, but thanks, man. That's really cool. I dig it. And yeah, uh, yeah. merch. Let's see. Are we done chilling? Merch. Yeah. No, we, uh, no, we, we, we got do lots to do, for so. a couple of more people. <laughs> don't have yeah. pants. Uh, we're going to get to it. I got to get this out of the way before we put a pin on it. But uh, stickers, shirts, and all that fun stuff. But to Pedro's point, the Hyper 212. I put it up. Of course I did. Because that's not yeah. something you don't get. Speaking of family heirlooms, it's like this was your <laughs> father's 212 and his father's before him. <laughs> and it's, they're still going to make an adapter that fits on whatever laser seven processor is available. And it's going to work too. That's going to yeah. be the thing. <laughs> that's no, that's not going thing. anywhere. It's working really well. Yeah. So it's. Yeah. That, the Hyper 212 <laughs> serves as a testament of like, don't over engineer something on accident because then you just buy the one. But. We need to think. We have some new patrons. Yeah. We so we have Lord Mocha, our new patron, one of our newest patrons, as well as Daniel, which is our new, another new patron. Lord Mocha Yay. And Daniel. I think Daniel's coming back, but that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Man. Okay. That's and awesome. Uh, we also then, need to thank uh, Zhao He, our uh, latest yes. Twitch sub. He subbed during the show earlier. You probably saw it. So, uh-huh. uh, no, we weren't ignoring you. Saw we you. saw you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, are, are you sure the um, man, any letter in that Zhao uh, could be silent, wouldn't mess with it at all, would it? No. Ah. No. <laughs> all right. That's cool. Man. That's kind of brilliant. Um, seriously, thank you all um, for letting us do this. Also, um, you're all crazy. They yes. are, man. Fiscally responsible. Like, <laughs> I, I, we've set up like multiple testaments of fiscal responsibility to like display. And that. people oh, take us it. up on it too. It's like, oh, is that a challenge? Is it like, boom? <laughs> That's kind of brilliant, man. But hey, it keeps us from like uh, doing the shaka jiva thon of like in this episode. Bro, I can't wait till the first time that appears at the beginning of a podcast. We're like, oh, you've sold out. Like, it costs money to do this, bro. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> if it didn't cost anything bad, I'd be the first person to do this absolutely for free. Um, our goal is to break even. So that's a very weird business structure, by the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes. So let's get in. Oh, also, if somebody buy Pedro a new microphone or I'm going to kill him. Uh, uh, a slice oh, of pie. No. <laughs> I thought it was okay. <laughs> Oh. Am I dancing around too much in front of it? Is that the issue? No, I just trust me. I, I'm going to get you something for Christmas. Okay. Uh, well, I look forward to it. Uh, whatever it may be. Uh, the slice <laughs> of pie this week is actually smaller than the Microsoft uh, Heart Linux segment, uh, which is odd. It's one of those weird episodes. But mm -hmm. uh, no, we do have uh, some news on the Raspberry Pi proper, which is the See, compute that, module four. There, there's my interest. You give me that big breakup. I was like, oh, the compute yes. module is great. It's, how much is this breakup board? Six hundred dollars? No, I don't know. It's probably. Not it's probably lot. not going to be that much. The compute module itself is actually pretty cheap. It's uh, $25, and you get the exact same SoC, Wi-Fi, everything else that you would get with the uh, regular Raspberry Pi 4. Mm -hmm. But it comes in the compute module uh Help me format out with this part, though, Pedro. 32 variants. Does this thing come in, like, lemon cream? Mm -hmm. Or one. What are we talking about? <laughs> the the variants come from. Uh, you can pick the RAM from one to eight gigabytes, and you can pick whether or not it has eMMC storage built in to the compute module. Okay. Like uh, anywhere, you could have none. You could have two gigs, four gigs, thirty-two gigs, what have you. So yeah, there's a lot of combinations you can do uh, between the thirty-two. Exactly. Uh, the But yeah, no, the interesting bit is how this uh, particular compute module differs from the previous one, because the uh, compute module 3 was a DDR2 uh, form factor. It's like uh, an SO DIMM, like a RAM stick for a laptop. That was the form factor. This one, it has two um, very... Uh, <laughs> interesting connectors at the bottom which are basically if you had an old dell laptop with an e-series port it, it's a lot like that it provides uh direct access to the pcie bus of the um the soc and you plop that into that baseboard that has the full size hdmis and a bunch more connectivity and everything I want one of those and the uh, compute module to go with it because that looks really nice. I, I want to play with that. How much? <laughs> okay. I'm, I want that board, but I want that yeah. board where I can just take a Pi 4, flip it upside down and stick it in it. Someone will probably make an adapter for th those connectors to the GPIO. Because I want that PCI <laughs> hole, that buy one PCI hole, because do you know what I can put in that? A lot of things. Firewire Capture card. card. I don't know. Firewire. Or firewire card. I can, oh, make, I can yes, finally can. <laughs> spec out and build a like super affordable jackbox. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying be be careful, Frosty. I might be like, yo, I need you to like open source 3D print like some designs, man, so we can have one for the masses. <laughs> Why? Yeah, no, it's, yeah. <laughs> the, the compute modules, the whole idea behind them is has always been very interesting. And yeah. uh, they keep improving. They, they change the form factor from one to the other, which kind of makes sense. Um, and the connector actually reminds me a lot of uh, the connectors for EMMC modules in the um, the Pine books. It, it's just longer. So, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. These have always been interesting, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to play with that big board. I, I want, you know, if you're just going to give me a, P hey, a PCIe hole is better than none. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> nice to have a refresh. It, it is a little sad, though, for people who have uh, the projects, they've already used the compute module in with a SODIM. So, uh, but but this is so much faster, and they can adapt it. Uh, it's It's even smaller and has more on it, so... That is cool too. And it has the Wi Fi's and the blue teeth and yeah. everything else built in to the compute module. Into it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has a lot of advantages. It's pretty cool. All right. Uh, maybe you have some questions, thoughts, hints, allegations. That's right. We're getting ready to wrap this 
up. Um, you want to contact us and you don't want to mail us a pie. You just want to mail us a question. I mean, if you'd like to uh, mail a Ven a actual physical edible pie, make sure it contains no meat. <laughs> also, oh. it's going to have to fit in like the smallest P.O. box to it because that's what I have. <laughs> and that thing's still like 30 bucks, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I can't the have best sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so no sugar for Jill, uh no uh meat for Ven. Me, I'm not fussy, just give me pie. Uh the <laughs> Best way to get in touch with us is to go to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button. There's a little form you need to fill out. Uh, make sure LWDW is the show that you're sending your feedback to. Uh, someone is uh, very, very likely to see uh, your feedback if you send it there. If you leave us a comment on YouTube, yeah, we'll probably see it. We don't get those many comments, so it's fine. And now I have that song stuck in my head. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I want you to be hot, possibly sticky sweet. Uh, it is pretty warm in here because that door is closed. Do you and- hear that, Nori? Are you listening? Hose them <laughs> down, cover them up, and kick them out front. Oh, mm, Actually, it'd be pretty nice to be standing around outside now because it's chilly outside. No, it's, it, really it's nice. going to be brilliant. He's, he's going to be curled up into the old position on his lawn licking himself. It's going to be adorable. You'll be covered in sugar. Don't worry. Himself. <laughs> oh, right, because right. the sugar. I've yeah. forgotten about that. See, <laughs> attention span of a gnat. That's why we love it. <laughs> Goldfish got nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> Feedback this week. First bit from Daniel. Man, uh, what's it say, Jill? I can't read. It says, thanks for mentioning the article, guys. I'm going to keep running with uptime birthday hashtag uptime birthday uh daniel (laughs) it comes to us from daniel rosehill because uh last week we we talked about his article about ubuntu uh, backups and the tools he uses in the software so and it was really well done so he contacted um us on youtube as well as me on twitter when i did our big tweet for the show and we had a really nice conversation going back and forth and uh, I'm going to keep up with uh, his uh, tweets on his backup solutions. They're very informative and really good ideas. It's something that everyone really needs to do is to have th- three backups of everything. And uh, as, yeah, as thank the you, person Daniel. On the internet who <laughs> coined the term YOLO raid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good article man um uptime birthday yep. yeah go rock it out sometimes sometimes it can be an army of one that's awesome <laughs> and if that's been working for you and you've sort of uh interiorized the, the, that whole thing or internalized interiorized uh, the- <laughs> yes. <laughs> you gotta quit licking so much sugar. <laughs> the problem is, I got up at 7 a.m. and I'm still not awake. So, yeah. uh. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, no, it, if that's been, you know, if you have that muscle memory and you have that kind of, uh, workflow that it does, uh, fit in with that kind of <laughs> backup schedule, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. What do we have up next, Pedro? Up next, we have Bobby. Bobby and Baba. Bobby has got some uh, something to tell us, uh, or to tell you specifically. Then I'm so happy I found your channel. I was trying to find some sleeper FireWire devices I could try on my Ryzen 3800X. <laughs> devices like we're talking about cars. <laughs> it, yeah, oh, it's well, no, like no, uh, no, old junky looking. PCs, but PCs, with, yeah, with I heard yeah. I've heard the kids use those. Like, my sleeper build, and I'm like, oh, okay, I see what you're going for. Never mind, just shut up. Then. Yeah, it's like the old cases uh, when you had I, the uh, main box and Tipsy like, Danger. Like, oh yeah, I remember 1995 <laughs> when I was doing that with 36s and putting <laughs> yes, in there. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, he's saying that he used an Apogee Duet before with his old MacBook Pro. So what he you feels it's a good Apoogie? time. Yes, an Apoogie. Right. Right. <laughs> Apoogie. Uh, Ap- uh, so he feels good about the quality of the sound and will look out for a deal. Also saw a um, pre-Sonus review from you, Ven. Yeah. Uh, the thought of I possibly of having eight channels of uh, 96K. I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
96k a dat sb diff and possibly maybe hopefully MIDI for under a hundred bucks is such a steal. Use the Focusrite uh, 2i2 Gen 2, yes, for a while, and right now it uses a Yamaha MG10XU mixer, it has his USB in and out for monitoring. Anyway, I have to dig deeper into your content. Thanks for making these. Bobby. Bobby. Right. Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bobby. That's why I make <laughs> That right there. See, I, I I don't want to say Bobby because that's a very common dog name in Portugal. <laughs> so it's Bobby. Oh. <laughs> hey man, um, yeah. In all seriousness, I'm glad somebody finds that's you know I do some the entire series is for a very very small niche, but it's definitely a niche of people who are looking to get away from Windows or get away from OS X or just something different. That avenue needs to be there to say, hey, man, I'm thinking about switching over to Linux. Are the tools that I need available on the documentation for Linux with audio production, especially like, hey, man, I can save you some money. Come over to Linux. Let's, let's take advantage of this. Because like I said, this hardware's nothing's wrong with the hardware. It's just the interfaces has changed. Everyone's moved to Thunderbolt. Well, there's USB interfaces, but those are tinker toys. Oh, I just made some people mad. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I, I want to get that information out there. And just, hey, man, that, that makes it worthwhile right there. Because, you know, these are never going to be like high traffic videos or anything like that. They're there for, I always wanted to start some of these videos off with, haven't you performed an interesting query? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's brilliant, man. Um, thanks for taking a look. And um Hopefully, uh, you'll like get into the Linux music maker. Just into Linux, man. Come on, we we got to give them gateway drugs. We got to have different like things to throw out there and like reel them in because it works better than you should just Linux. You're like, but what about? Nope, you need to Linux. Linux. <laughs> that person's going to quit listening to you eventually. Yeah. Well, beautiful people, mm -hmm. we've run out of time, so we got to roll the credits. Yeah. Aw, thank you to our new patrons, Lord Moko and Daniel. And to our okay. Theron once Th again. There was a pronunciation guide for uh, Lord Joe Moko? here earlier. Uh, uh, Moka? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Joe Hey. <laughs> not Joe He, so, okay, my bad. Dao Hey. <laughs> Joe Hey. Okay. Joe awesome. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Joe <laughs> 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 Yay! We love you all. Well, thanks for the pronunciation guide. That was very yeah, useful. Yes. That, yeah, definitely. That's very really handy for Pedro. Pedro's like wanted to make sure so he can avoid ever saying it that way again. That's how Pedro works. <laughs> My name's not Venstone. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Venstone ways to give you three pronunciations. <laughs> We need to get Liz back on the show at some point. <laughs> Beautiful people. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>